what is going on everybody taylor here and today i'm going to be doing a reaction and commentary for loki episode two for those of you who maybe haven't seen the episode one uh, reaction i just want to let you guys know that i have seen all of these episodes except for the finale of the season but i wanted to go back and re-watch them get to take them all in with a bit of perspective get to talk about them um now that I kind of know what's going on, just because as much as I enjoy initial reactions, which I'm going to do with the finale, but as much as I enjoy initial reactions, sometime, I, sometimes I think that a second viewing reaction is actually a little bit better because you've had some time to, to think about it, you've had some perspective, and a lot of the times for me, at least on a second watch of things, I pick up on things that I missed the first time around. So. I don't know. And you guys have been kind of asking me to do this, and I know it's technically not a reaction because I have seen it already, but I'm going to jump into it. I'm really, really excited to talk about this episode now that I've had a little bit of time to sit with it. Now I get to revisit it because I really enjoyed the series. So let's jump in. Let's do this. Man, this reminds me of the Renaissance Fair that I used to go to with my family all the time. Shout out to the Renaissance Festival in Arizona. Hi! What's going on? You guys aren't dressed right. <laughs> so. She's like, I don't get paid enough to deal with this, but you're ruining the vibe. <laughs> yeah. You must need this. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. She's got a point. I, I, fe I feel for her, man. This is such a cool setting. The lighting. The open flame. Mm, that's creepy. Yep. Oh, time for a battle. Holding out for a hero. Oh my gosh, that voiceover, I didn't notice that before, but that is actually awesome, the way they did that. And this song just kicks so much butt. It's the perfect choice. And I love that this is the first glimpse we get of the variant coming in and using some form of power to take over somebody's body and to be that that powerful we get to see the first glimpse of the variant's power oh that's such a cool effect on the eyes oh this is just i love everything about this scene it's just beautiful the music the variant power display the aesthetic of, of the set, it's just so good. It's just so cool, this whole scene. And then the door just, ah, oh, so good. So good, that whole sequence is just beautiful. I love the way that it's executed. Are you recording or are you alive? Uh, sort of both. That's such a vague answer, and just really adds to the creepiness of this character. Oh, hey, quit it! I love their their back and forth though. That's. You can't hide it. Well, my jet ski magazine. Put it down. Come on. We better see Moby is on jet ski at some point. I swear to God, I really want that jacket really bad. Good. It's so yeah. cool. Smart. This guy, a type we should all be very uh, familiar with because the TVA has pruned a lot of these guys, almost more than any other variant. And no two are alike. Slight differences in appearance. That version is not so terrifying. Slight. Different powers, although powers <laughs> I love how Loki's just like, what? Illusion. I'll have my magic back. Is no one concerned about that? Of what? Me betraying you. No, why not? He's so offended that no one thinks that he's just going to betray everyone with his magic back. Ah, oh, yes. I'm just gonna keep screaming about how I love the effects of the doorways. Did you watch any of the training videos you were supposed to? Well, as many as I could stand, your TVA propaganda TVA propaganda, is, awesome. propaganda is the absolute correct way to phrase that. Darn it. I watched the videos. I mean, some of them. 
Sounds like me watching work training videos. God, that's such- I love the effects of this show. That's such a cool way to do that. I mean, it is adorable that you think you could possibly manipulate me. I'm ten steps ahead of you. I've been playing a game of my own all along. Oh, I love how Loki is... I think Loki's also trying to convince himself that he's been ten steps ahead this whole time. Because he's clearly not. He's clearly out of his depth, but he's trying to pull out his tricks that he's used to make something happen. <laughs> that elevator is horrifying. I am definitely afraid of elevators and not only is that a glass elevator it's a glass elevator that goes up about eight bajillion stories so that would be an instant panic attack slash heart attack for me okay what files can i have i love how he's just resigned to the fact he's like just freaking give me anything then just give me files what what am i allowed to have happy reading and the only thing that he's allowed to have is files on himself <laughs> That's brutal. Seeing as this look, you would have no idea that Asgard was ever destroyed. Mm -hmm. This Loki is getting to essentially live all the traumas that he would have, but just through information rather than living through it, seeing video clips of it or reading files about it. Which is... I can't even imagine doing that and then knowing there's like nothing you can actually do about it. Like, it's just, it is what it is. It's on paper, it happened, and you never got to experience it or know anything about it or have any ability to impact it at all. But I also love that even though it makes him emotional and upset, he still pulls out the clue that he needs. He's smart enough to make the connections that he's looking for. Ragnarok, are you familiar? Yes, the destruction of Asgard and most of its people. I'm sorry. Yes, very sad. Anyway, it got me thinking. Once again, I love how he's able to compartmentalize because clearly it was very upsetting of him to learn, upsetting for him to learn about it. But he's able to compartmentalize it because he's on a mission. Let's just say <laughs> your salad is Asgard. No, I love it's how upset Mobius is that his salad is getting taken away salad. from him. I could go down. It's also. So, like, it's so on brand for Loki to just be like, I'm gonna describe this in the most chaotic way I can, make Push an example of it, take the salad reason. that you were enjoying, and just destroy it to make Besides my point. Pork. And I could also set fire to the palace. No, just stop. Don't, don't set fire, don't to, the set fire to the palace. I can do. I love that. It's just such a good delivery. He's so disappointed there's nothing to pour onto the salad. Oh, God. You. Nice to see you. I just need this for a second. Because the apocalypse is coming. Oh, Mobius, come on. What could possibly go wrong? we got to properly test this theory. Well, here's a fun theory. You lure me out into the field, and then you stab me in the back. And that's a theory I don't want to test. I never stab anyone in the back. That's such a boring form of betrayal. I love how aghast he is that he would suggest such a boring, boring form of betrayal. <laughs> the big apocalypse. So excited about it now. Until this entire town is wiped off the face of its planet. We don't want to get too giddy. Oh, come on. It's cool. No, it is cool, but it's just, it's just not in good taste because of... Well, they're all going to die anyway. All right, so we're going to start very small. To start. You can't tell very Loki small. to start small. Come on now, Mobius. He is so just... He is just the epitome of chaos energy. I love it. Mobius is just regretting his decision immensely. <laughs> Nothing matters. Nothing has any consequence. That is such a great meme template. Nothing matters. Nothing has any consequence. It feels very. It feels Zero very uh, in the now. No it feels very in the, in the world that a lot of us are living in right now. Never even know we were here. If it were me, this is where I would hide. That was a great mic drop. Just flip up. Just dig it. 
you, but in the early 1990s, for a brief shining moment, there was a beautiful. I love how passionate he is about jet skis. It just makes me smile. Which we call the jet ski. I think a TVA agent showing up on a jet ski on the sacred timeline that would create a branch for. We sure. need that branch, though. That. We need the branch of, of a TVA agent on a jet ski on the timeline. Come on now. You really believe in all this stuff, don't you? I don't get hung up on believe, not believe. I just accept what mm. is. That's interesting. I just accept what is. I don't get caught up in believe and not believe. That's such a fascinating Every time I start to admire your intelligence, you say something like that. Hey, who created you, Loki? A frost giant of Jotunheim. And who raised you? Odin of Asgard. Odin, god of the heavens, Asgard. Mystical realm beyond the stars, frost giants. Listen to it's yourself. It's not the same. It's completely no, no, different. No, no, no. It's not oh, the same. Oh, actually, it's exactly the same thing. It's not exactly the same though, because Loki has actually seen those things. He was he was raised by Odin, and he has has seen the frost giants, so he knows what he's dealing with. Whereas Mobius, we know, has never met the timekeepers, has never actually seen them. So and it's TVA definitely completely life. different. And it's real because I believe it's real. It's real because I believe it's real is, once Fair again, enough. super fascinating. There's no such thing as free will. Well, I mean, you know, it's an oversimplification. So in fact, in a way, you and I here at the TVA, we're the only ones who are actually free. Such an interesting conversation about free will and predestination and belief. It definitely makes sense for a character like Loki to be the one to come in and just question the entire establishment, the whole system, the one to actually ask questions and try to find real answers rather than what, what rather than just being, you know, obedient and believing what you've been told about how it all works. Only order. Mm -hmm. No chaos. It Once again, boring. agent of I'm chaos. Sure Love well, that. You. You see, I know something children don't. What's that? But no one bad is ever truly bad. And no one good is ever truly good. That's such a great line. No one bad is ever truly bad. No one good is ever truly good. There's, there's gray in things, guys. Black and white is not black and white. Always, like... I, know. <laughs> I love how he's confused that he just got complimented for being clever. It's not the climate disaster of 2048 or the tsunami of 2051. God, the extinction of the swallow, is that a thing? Completely screwed up the ecosystem. Great. Krakatoa, I feel erupted. like these are the things we have to look forward well, to in our real good. actual timeline with the climate disaster, so that's fun. No, got on. That's where he is. Alabama 2050. You're gonna take my <laughs> job if I'm not careful. I love this little partnership that they're forming. So good. <gasps> it's oh. daggers. Oh. No. Haven Hills, Alabama. Oh damn. That's not a good place to be. That'd be horrifying. So that's what we have to look forward to with the climate crisis we've got going on, because it doesn't seem very promising to me. I want that ability. That would be super that? convenient. That was me. Using magic to dry my clothes. So I didn't announce myself with every squeaky footstep like the rest of you. Uh. Why is it the people <laughs> you can't trust are always saying, trust me? I just super got distracted by how glorious Loki's hair was in that shot. And there's the variant. Just where Loki said they would be. That is such a cool shot. I love how they show the transfer of energy. And how Loki's processing what's happening. You're the fool the TVA brought in to hunt me down. Me, I presume. Please. If anyone's anyone, you're me. 
That little cock of the head and smile was just fabulous. These people are scared. They're about to die. They should be scared. Okay, not of us. I love the humanity that he has that a lot of them seem to be missing. No. I love how startled he is by that. And that he's actually concerned about her. God, now I understand why Paul found this so annoying. <laughs> Listen, enough with your games. I've been trying to help- I love him actually getting a taste of his own medicine by having to deal with another Loki. <laughs> I would never treat me like this. <laughs> I love how just offended he is by that. That this other, this variant of him is not behaving the way that he would expect. That he's establishing they clearly have very different personalities and, and ideals. And even though they might be variants of each other, it's not what he's expecting. And this fighting with just household appliances it feels very James Bond to me. Very, just grab whatever's there. Just make, make a weapon out of it. Just... Very spy-esque. This shovel Loki is A plus, man. A plus. What is this about? Brace yourself, Loki. Brace yourself <laughs> indeed. <laughs> yes, girl. This isn't about you. Right. I love how completely unprepared he was for that reveal. Brilliant stuff. And she is fabulous right out the gate. It definitely makes sense that it is a Lady Luffy type variant to me. That, that that's uh, the person that is able to outsmart everybody. <laughs> that is horrifying when you think about the implications to the timeline. Yeah, that's major yikes right there. That is code red. Oh, impressive stuff, really. Whew, that's some straight up chaos. Yeah, that's, that's a mess. It's not good. Once again, the lighting, A plus. The atmosphere they create on this show is so, so perfect. Look how the doorway stays open for him, and he really has this internal debate of what he's gonna do. Does he keep their trust, or does he go after her because he's so intrigued? Yep. so good! It's so good. Man, I just, I love the build-up to that of just, we're, we're chasing this variant. Everyone keeps referring to the variant as he because they're just assuming, because all the variants they've ever seen, according to what we've seen, are other Lokis that are male Lokis, that, that that's just what they're assuming that they're gonna get. And then we get the reveal that it is the Lady Loki type. That it's definitely not what they were expecting or ready to deal with. Loki himself clearly was not ready for that reveal. And it's just, it's so good. And it's such a good cliffhanger to leave it on of Loki has this choice. Is he going to keep his trust that he has established with the TVA to this point? Or is he just going to be that chaos agent part of himself that just needs to know? That curious, that curious person who's just like, you, you got to go for it. Your opportunity is about to close and you don't. Like, you're probably going to be able to find this variant again, but you put in all the work to try and find them this time and he just goes for it. And I, I love that because it's, it's it very much feels in character for, for this Loki. And uh, yeah, I, I love the the overall atmosphere of this episode. Like I said, I love the lighting choices that they made. The sets are just beautiful. And um, 
and yeah, this this to me really, really sets up the story going forward from here because you've established who the variant is that has been a mystery up to this point, except that it was a Loki variant, obviously. And that finally gets revealed to us, and now you can actually start with the character development of that variant and all of the, the ripple effects that now come along with Loki following her through the door. So I really, really enjoy this episode a lot. Uh, I think it's kind of the perfect way to give our Loki a lot of character development. Like I said, we, we see him putting in, in the work to figure this out, being clever, wanting to show that he's right, wanting to prove that he's the superior Loki wanting other people to see him as, as clever, uh, really putting on the charm when he's trying to get what he wants. But we also see him very excited to be part of this mission, which is really cool. And um, yeah, and you can really just tell that Mobius is, is very different from a lot of the others at the TVA. He's still intent and, and hell-bent on believing in the system that he's a part of and just doesn't really feel like being one to question it. But he clearly has a lot more empathy and, and shows more human emotion and, and has kind of a little bit more of a chaotic energy than the rest of the people we see at the TVA, which makes for a very interesting dynamic between him and Renslayer and him and Loki um, and, and just the other TVA agents, which is really cool. But yeah, what did you guys think of this second episode? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. As always, all my links to my social media are down in the description if you want to find me there. I also have a link to my Patreon where I've been doing exclusive content if you'd like to check that out. Thank you guys so, so much for all of your continued support, and I will see you next time.